Heavy Metal Heaven, the hellishly loud double act of iconic bands Def Leppard and Motley Crue is coming to Australia in November. But despite the shared stage and their shared rock legend status, these are two very different groups. For the unfamiliar, the best way to describe them is to borrow from their own words. Def Leppard says the band reaches for the stars to see what lies beyond. The members of Motley Crue, on the other hand, don't think that deeply. Rather, they're aiming to be the most cretinous band on the planet. Together, though, the two groups are proving making a big racket makes big money. The venue is London's revered Wembley Stadium. Good evening, Wembley! And diehard fans are here to see not one, but two of the biggest heavy metal bands of the 80s. Hellraisers from California, Motley Crue. Is everybody stuck in traffic? What the hell? Not enough people out there for you? Oh, that's awesome. But... <laughs> it's huge! and the UK's favourite sons, Def Leppard. Let's just see you're a good one. <laughs> good fun, huh? Yeah. Well, I think the crowd is pumped. Yeah? Yeah, I did a warm-up back oh, for good, you. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Thank you, thanks. Sang a few tunes, good did stuff. a dance, yeah. Oh, should be fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, listen, good luck out there. Def Leppard has been going strong for 46 years. Motley Crue for 42. But despite a love of making noise and sharing the stage on a world tour, they're two very different bands. Hi. Hi. Vince Neil is the legendary lead singer of Motley. We've been doing stadiums for, uh, you know, almost two years now. And uh, I, I love them. You know, you just... A load of people out there enjoying and singing and fists in the air. The rest of the famous crew are frenetic drummer Tommy Lee, bass player and songwriter Nicky Six, and at 52, the baby of the bunch, new guitarist John Five. I'm thinking I'm going to wake up the next morning and go, God, I had this crazy dream. I was yeah. in <laughs> Molly Crew and writing music and playing Wembley Stadium and all this stuff. Man, it was a crazy we, dream. We, uh, we, get back to work. Oh, OK, I'll yeah, sorry. Get back to work. <laughs> we, were re we were rehearsing, and in between songs, John looks at me and he goes, am I here? Yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, yeah. In their heyday, Motley Crue did all they could to live up to their name. Offstage, these Americans took drugs, sex and rock and roll to a whole new level. On stage, they were just as crazy. Was the ambition to shock, to get attention? Was that how you approached it? I, I don't think we were thinking about shocking. I think we just loved what we loved. Vince would light me on fire. We had chainsaws on stage. We're getting to do exactly what we want to do on our own terms. And it was like, who knew that we would be here 42 years later? We were just talking about this yesterday. The first time we played, when we were just starting out, we sold out three nights at the Whiskey A Go Go. And we were like, we were so f green, we thought we had made it. I remember calling my parents going, I made it. <laughs> it's true. I, I, we didn't make shit. Across the Atlantic, Def Leppard was born out of the struggling steel town of Sheffield. In 1977, music tragic Joe Elliott helped form the band, pitching the name he'd conjured up two years earlier as a 14-year-old. You didn't have a band, but no. you had the name of the band. It was like, it was all kind of predestined. The guys came to my mum and dad's house. We all got on. What about a name? Boom. Their destiny was greatness. In 1988, they were the biggest band in the world and in total have sold more than 110 million albums. Phil Collins says they're committed to evolving, to forever staying, if not young, at least current. Do you miss the looseness, though, of the 80s? 
I don't. There's a big cop out, especially in rock and roll, that, hey, yeah, man, it's loose and it's da da da. That's an excuse for being lazy and crap. You know? So we, we, we don't do that, you know. With nearly five decades together, Def Leppard has experienced many highs and plenty of lows. Devastatingly, in 1984, drummer Rick Allen's left arm was torn off in a high-speed car accident. To have a band with a drummer with one arm, that's a fairly unique it's, challenge. Well, yeah, right? there isn't a book <laughs> of one-arm drummers, is there? You know, so you don't just kick somebody out because they had an accident. If this band was going to be without Rick, it was his choice. It was going to be his decision. Incredibly, Rick redesigned his drum kit, learned how to play it all over again, and is still with the band. But the tragedy that haunts them all is the death in 1991 of their guitarist and songwriter Steve Clark, who accidentally overdosed on alcohol and prescription drugs. He was Phil's best mate, and their booze binges were so notorious they were known as the Terror Twins, until Phil gave up the grog nearly 40 years ago. What made you stop drinking? I started blacking out and woke up with another earring, didn't remember any of it, woke up with a Rolex watch. It's like, whoa, where's that from? It got just out of control and I was like, whoa, and I, I was able to pull it back, thank God. And uh, unfortunately, Steve couldn't. What led to the excess for you? Is it just that it was all on offer? Or, or is it a personality thing or an addiction? I think it's like the slow boiling frog. You don't realise that you're boiling until, until you're like, until you're boiling, you know what I mean? And as you get older, you kind of understand what, what the pitfalls are and what's gonna, what can drag you down potentially. So you, you, you kind of avoid the icebergs, you know, you, you navigate around it. For Motley Crue, not always so. Unashamedly, on a collision course with anything and everything, as you'll see, Motley is not just the bad boys of rock and roll, but the dark side of decadence. Do you think if you were starting out today that you would make it as Motley Crue? I think we'd get cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> we would definitely get cancelled. I think we're good. Everybody hanging on? Precious on? cargo, honey. Okay. It's, it's only the band. Yeah, precious cargo. All five is on one thing. Backstage at Wembley Stadium with Def Leppard and their families, and there are plenty of laughs. We go down, we go down together. <laughs> The average age of the band may be nearly 62, but they remain committed to youthful silliness. And don't go down on the ramp of promises or you'll fall down a big hole. Hey, 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 hey. Joe Elliott, Phil Collin and the band are currently on a world tour. And with the other heavy metal hitters of the 80s, Motley Crue will soon be in Australia. We've rented a plane together, right? <clears throat> and it's <laughs> massive. It's massive. <laughs> and we're going to dress it. And the thing is, like, what name goes first? Motley or Leopard? They've been on the road together so for the better part it's of it's two years. So whoever it lands on... Gets the uh, gets the priority bit on the plane. Okay, it's, 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 it's the like only fair way to do it. We, we, we have page yet this whole tour. <laughs> and have worked out a unique way of sorting through the really big stuff. Okay, this is stand back, everyone. Oh. oh, you got it. It's the only fair way to do it. While talk of big planes and naming rights is very rock and roll, that's where the star treatment seems to end for Phil Collin and Def Leppard. What is it like to be back in London? It's great, you know, it's my birthplace and, you know, all of that stuff. I absolutely love it. And now based like in the US now. and on a I'm long tour, what too. Phil surprisingly loves about London at this moment is the chance it gives him to do his own washing, popping into the house he still has here to avoid hotel laundry mix-ups. I did sneak home, I did my laundry yesterday, jumped on the tube, which was just there. You did not yeah. get on the tube. Of course I did, yeah. Did you? What it's about the, the big way... black limo? Or... Oh, please. No, come on. On the other hand, the lads from Motley Crue seem to embody a superstar lifestyle more completely than most. Their notorious offstage antics, replayed recently in the Netflix bio The Dirt, 
were sordid and destructive, the ultimate in death-defying decadence. Nikki, you said something along the lines of, were we, you know, drug addicts, absolutely, alcoholics for sure, politically incorrect, absolutely dangerous, absolutely. Did Any, I say that? Yeah. You, I you would did, never say something <laughs> like that. You so would say something like that. Any regrets, any remorse about how you guys were during the heydays of the 80s? There's, uh, there's really no room to do anything other than live in the present. You know, we've all had our addiction issues. Like, I turned 22 years sober in two days. It's kind of crazy to think about it because you're just one day at a time. Is it better being sober? My life was not good if I use, um, you know, probably Vince's life is better than I don't use to. Because <laughs> I'd be trying to burn down his house or something. But you know what? Um, we've like had each other's backs through everything. Three of us have been to jail. Ever since Motley formed in 1981, they've made news for their excesses. Heroin overdoses, a fatal drink driving accident, and such debauchery, they've reportedly been banned for life from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. When you consider that and consider the trouble you guys have got yourselves into and, and, and some of the troubles you've had, have you ever considered that maybe you're not good for each other? Oh, you mean like we're in a toxic relationship? <laughs> yeah. And I, I couldn't imagine being in another band with the, without no. these guys, without mm. these guys. No f way. It's, um, it's just magical when we hit the stage and crowd goes up and we start playing and it's, uh, there's just something magical about it. The magic has earned the band an estimated $250 million and sold around 100 million albums. Success well deserved, according to Def's Joe Elliott. You know, as mad as they seem to be, they're actually kind of, I don't want to bust their, <laughs> their myth, but they're actually really nice guys, you know. Def Leppard may wear the mantle of elder statesmen more easily than rock gods these days, but 63-year-old Joe Elliott has no desire to slow down, with the band bringing out two new albums, one with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, just for something different. If somebody had said to us, he's going to make a symphonic record and he's going to go to number one in the classical charts, like, we'd have just laughed, you know. So it's been a very interesting reboot. So you well, use the, the word reboot, mm. the other R word, retirement. No, God. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> I'm not even legally at retirement age, so that's not even, it's not even on the horizon for me. But no, it's, it's never, never crossed my mind, you know, because we enjoy doing what we do. We, we always have a um, long way to last. Motley is also back in the charts with new music created for The Dirt. As for anything else, in true crew style, who knows? After all these years together, is Motley Crue still raising its middle finger to the world? I don't know. I, I feel like their finger is about to go a little higher. I think we're in the kind of like we don't give a f phase of our career. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.